Johnson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Barney, Bob Gilmore, and Dr. Kingsley and his little daughter are flying to Tibet to capture the octopus and his gang and to rescue Marsha Winfield. The criminal has been warned of their pursuit and seeks to stop them in Chung King when they land to deliver a stowaway, Chang, an octopus gangster, and also to refuel their plane. Failing in this, he plans to destroy his enemies when they land at Da Shen Lu, gateway to Tibet. The boys know nothing of this, however, and we find them nearing Da Shen Lu and looking for a possible landing field. Suffering wang doodles. Look at them mountains rising up on either side of that valley. Looks like there ain't enough room to fly between them, much less land on the floor of the valley. Well, that's because they're so high, Barney. There's plenty of good landing fields around Da Shen Lu. Yeah, just show me where. All I see is roofs of houses, and they go smack dab up against them mountains. Ah, uh, listen, pal, as long as I'm flying this plane, let me worry about where I'm going to set her down, will you? But make you nervous, go back to speed me of it. Oh, and while you're back there, tell them to fasten your safety belt for the landing. Okay, but if we crack up, don't say I didn't warn you. Maybe you'd like to make the landing. No, thanks. I won't say another word. So long. <laughs> so long, you fuck. Are we going to land soon? Practically immediately, Speed. Clint's just looking for a level spot now. Losing altitude fast. Yeah, Bob, but I think he'll drag the valley before setting it down. Drag the valley? That means flying low and slow, Gene, so as to see what kind of ground is below. Lucky it's light. I'd hate to land at Dosh and Lou at night. Something tells me they ain't got landing lights in this neck of the woods. Well, there's no actual danger, is there, Bonnie? Oh, no, Doc. But you all had better fasten your landing belts just in case we hit a bump or two. Okay. Gee, look at those mountains. Biggest things I ever saw. Yes. I feel like they'll tumble over on us any minute. <laughs> if you think these mountains are high, Gene, wait till you see Nyan Cheng Tang La in Tibet. Maybe you'll have a chance to see the Himalayas, too. Then you'll really see something in mountains. I should think you'd have a great many avalanches in such a country as this, Bob. What with such high mountains and so much snow on their peaks? Well, they do in Tibet proper, Doctor, but I believe we're safe from such things in Da Shen Lu. You'll notice that most of the town is built just out of reach of slides, should one occur. Sounds like we're going to land soon. Yeah, everybody got their safety belt fastened? Got belt fastened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're landing pretty close to those mountains. Guess this is the only level spot Clint could find, Gene. Hold everything now. He's going to set her down. There we are. Down without a bump. Well, I don't know how you all feel, but I'll be glad to get out and stretch my legs. I'm kind of curious about this burg anyhow. You can unfasten your safety belts now. Okay. Is everybody all right? Yeah. yeah Clint. Well, I see we have a welcoming committee on hand. Uh, we'll have to go into the town to get our passports these days and identify ourselves. But uh, someone should stay here with the plane. Uh, what about you, Barney? Me? Say, did I just come along for the ride? When do I get to see the world anyhow? Well, perhaps the officials could leave us a guard of some sort, Clint. Well, maybe. Let's pile out and see what we can do anyhow. Okay. Come on, Jean. That's a girl. Yeah. Ooh, it's cold, isn't it? It's a lot higher than we were in Hong Kong, Jean. I think Clint said this valley was 8,500 feet high. Goodness. Just think how cold it must be on top of those mountains, then. Oh, look at all that snow up there. You'll see plenty of snow in Tibet, Jean. 
especially if we have to hang around the mountains or up in northern Tibet. Now I know why Clint told us to bring plenty of warm clothes along. Look, here comes a car. Wonder who's in it. Mm, we'll soon find out, Barney. And they'll know all about us, too. Da Shen Lu is highly interested in any strangers that may come to her. Do you think the octopus landed here, Clint? That's what I'm going to find out, Bob. But I doubt if he did. Probably he didn't come near the pass, but flew over the mountains, so as to be completely unobserved. I was taking an awful chance. Yeah, that's the way of the octopus. He doesn't know the meaning of fear. Once he makes up his mind to do a thing, he'll stop at nothing to gain his end. That's why he's become so powerful. A man without fear, conscience, or heart is bound to succeed. Well, that is for a time. Well, here comes the welcome committee. But I don't see him holding any key to the city. Oh, quiet, quiet, Barney. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to Dash and Lou. My name's Martin, attaché of the consul's office. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Martin. I'm Barlow of the International Secret Police. Now, this is Barney Dunlap, uh, Speed Gibson, Dr. Kingsley, uh, his daughter, Jean. Oh, and Bob Gilmore, also of the secret police. The police? Oh, my word. Don't tell me you've dragged someone to Dash and Lou. <laughs> I'd rather tell you what we've come here for uh, in private. Oh, rather. We can drive back to the office now. What about our plane? We don't want to leave it alone. Oh, I can leave these fellows I brought along to watch it for you, Mr. Dunlap. They're Tibetans. Very trustworthy, I'm sure. What do you think, Clint? I'd feel better if a member of our party stayed here too, Barney. I'm afraid that's quite impossible, Mr. Barlow. Uh, you see, the authorities of Dasha and Lu request that all who pass through the valley should present themselves before them and uh, show their credentials, passports, and so forth. Naturally, this must be done in person. I see. Very well, let's go then. Huh? I'm anxious to get the formalities over with and then continue on to Tibet. Mr. Ming, uh, these are members of the International Secret Police. Uh, two more of the party, a doctor and his little girl, are in the next room. It will not be necessary for them to submit to questioning, Mr. Martin. It is enough that I meet Clint Barlow at last. At uh, last? I am an admirer of yours, Mr. Barlow. While the Secret Police Organization does not give out anything concerning its members, everyone in government circles knows of you and your extraordinary work in the cause of law and order. Well, well, thank you, Mr. Ming. Naturally, your papers and passports are all in order. But I am curious as to why you are passing through Dashen Lu. Have you ever heard of the octopus? The octopus. And he don't mean a fish. I realize that, Mr. Dunlap. The octopus is a criminal leader, a master criminal. Then you have heard of him. Oh, yes, Speed. But only the merest whispers. His organization has never reached as far as Dashen Lu. At least, we have no record of his activities. And yet the octopus and the fleet of planes has entered Tibet. What? Yes. We have information that he's heading for the mountain range, Nianchen Tangla. But he cannot cross the border without our consent. He can't, but he has, Mr. Ming. The octopus is like that. He will not get far. The Tibetan government will discover the irregularity. I don't know about that, Mr. Ming. Forged passports are a handy tool for such a criminal as the octopus. Perhaps he has an established identity in Tibet. Then, if that were the case, why would he not go through the formalities at Dachshund Lu? No, because then if he stopped to show his papers, he'd have to explain his fleet of fighting planes. And then, too, the octopus is in a hurry. You see, we drove him from Hong Kong. He is anxious to establish his headquarters in Tibet before we can reach him. Mr. Barlow, I will cooperate with you in whatever way I can. I shall also notify the Tibetan government that the octopus has entered their territory. Good. And also notify them of our coming. The time has passed when we can work in secret. How soon do you plan to take off again? Well, it's getting too dark to risk a takeoff now. Anyhow, I have a little business to attend to before Louis leaving Dashen Lu. We shall leave at dawn, Mr. Ming. Until then, Mr. Barlow, Dashen Lu is yours. <laughs> Boy, what a place. 
What do you think of this town, Jane? It's like something out of the Arabian Nights, Barney. All these funny little shops and new sights and smells. Dyson New has some big buildings, too. Yeah, but not enough to make it a close second to New York, kid. Uh, the only big things I can keep my eyes on are those mountains looming above us, Barney. Look at that moon shining on the snow up there. You look at it, Bob. Me, I'm going to keep my eyes on what I see in the street. Hey! Hey, what's that funny-looking animal with the horns? Uh, yeah, Mr. Dunlap. Yeah, I know. Uh, huh? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Look, Mr. Martin, I asked what that animal was called. You don't have to yes me all the time. <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah. Somebody's gonna get their face slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean yak, Mr. Martin? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Speed. But Tibetans dropped the vinyl K. It's spelled yak and pronounced yak. <laughs> well, Barney thought you were kidding him, Mr. Martin. I don't see nothing funny about it. If you ask me, it's silly. Why don't they pronounce it the way it's spelled or vice versa and, and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd better get used to words that are pronounced differently than they're spelled, Barney. You'll find plenty of them in Tibet. Yeah, well, I'll stick to English. And that thing that looks like an overgrown steer is still yak to me. Say, we're getting kind of out of the town, aren't we? <laughs> we better turn back or we'll run into a herd of Barney's yaks. That's right. And we'll need plenty of sleep if we're going to take off at dawn. Yeah, well, you all better go back to the hotel, then. Uh, I have some business to attend to first. What, Clint? I want a last word with our Dasha and new operator, Barney. You want to come with me? Yeah, I think I will. It won't take long. I want to make sure about our refueling stations in Tibet. I don't want to get stuck on a mountaintop without gas. Well, do you think we ought to take a last look at our plane, fellas, just to make sure everything is all right? It isn't far from here now. There is no need of that speed. One of the guards came in a while ago and said that everything was top hole. Well, then we might as well get on back to the hotel, Gene. It's time little girls should be in bed. Uh, I can certainly use some sleep. Hey, what's that noise? Noise? Yeah, listen. Look! Look above us! The mountain! An avalanche! Back! Back, everyone! Run for your lives! 